Hi, it's Rod from Windswept and Interesting, and here we're looking at rotors um, from our kite turbine systems, and we're looking at the, the sort of projected area of the wind. So in these, uh, the wind is blowing along the x-axis, sort of left here to right here, and normally in an airborne wind energy system, you've only got the one rotor, uh, so you've got this cos-cubed relationship on the, the power available because of the amount of rotor that's exposed to the wind. But here you see this green rotor and the, the blue rotor, and because they're behind the red one, there's an amount of wind blocked. So we're looking to work out what is that blocked area there. Now, in the model we've got, we can mess with all sorts of parameters here. Change the whole thing there. We can you know, take individual components and um, you know, change sizes and scales. Uh, but I've got it on a fairly standard setup here, so I'll stick with that and I'll, I'll take you through you know, really what the model is showing. Um, yeah, again, there are bits you can tweak, like so the, the bank angles there. Oh. Um, um, yeah, we've got the, the main line. This one here is referenced up on this spot, and we can change the, the parameters. You know, scale it a wee bit. Um, and change the diameters and all that. Um, and then, yeah, like I say, mess with the bank angle and stuff. Um, we set the kites in and revolve them around. Um, we make these surface of revolutions. That surface of rev revolution is a, a wee bit awkward because it's got this seam in it. Uh, that gets a bit tricky later on. Once we've got that uh, surface, we can start. Uh, elevating it um, yeah, all the way up like that. We'll keep it fairly low just now so we can see things. And from that, we analyze you know, what's the area going back, what's the area presented down. And so each one of these you know, has its unblocked area presented backwards and down. How we get that is you know, fairly tricky. You know, we look at the original surfaces uh, that we've sent up. And we work out, okay, what's the curve on the outside of the red one? How does that get projected back onto the green one? So that's uh, looking for these curves. And the surface of the second one there is the, the green one. Uh, we split that surface and look at the areas. And here's the, here's the bit where it gets. So if you look at this green one, we've got these areas, these centroids here. Uh, there's one surface at the bottom one surface up here and one up here because of that split. Um, so we look for the, the Z values of those, uh, that's the, the you know, height values of these surfaces. And if we're higher than average, you know, greater than average, that's cool. We'll take those ones uh, and then go back. Look at the individual projected areas in the different planes. So with this plane we're looking at is the, the YZ plane. So across the back there, you get these shapes. And with this plane here, downwards, uh, we're, we're casting that shadow down basically onto the xy, that's the, the ground plane. So you get these values here. Now, and yeah, you get you can add all that together, sum it all together. Uh, and this is just a rounding factor, a bit of text, put that down. That all draws on here. Uh, yeah, this grasshopper stuff controls what goes on on the Rhino screen here. I hope. Hopefully you knew that. Sorry if I rushed ahead a lot there. Um, so the weird thing about this is we're not really following the cause cubed relationship that is standard with airborne wind energy. So with a standard airborne wind energy system, you're just looking at, say, the red rotor. And because that's in the front, um, it's actually blocking this green one and this blue one a bit. So you've only got this exposed area to the wind, which as we said, is going left to right. So it's seeing the full red rotor, it's seeing, well, cleanly it's seeing the tip of the, the green one, I guess, depending on the amount of flow through the rings and the amount of turbulence and stuff, you know, that the green's gonna be feeling. And depending how separated it is and how wide the rings are, so there's a whole lot of parameters still to consider in this, but you do have this blockage effect. And so looking at how cos cubed that's the um, area exposed to the oncoming wind. Yeah, that it normally in an airborne wind energy system, as you elevate it, 
you've got less exposure. So that is true on this red one. If you look at that, that number there is going down as this elevation goes up. Oh, hold on. No, that, that's the total swept area. Sorry, I should be looking at this one here. That's on the back. Uh, let's slide that along. So yeah, as that goes up, that number is dropping. Okay, and that holds true for the red one. But if we look at the green one and the blue one, more area is getting exposed as that rises. So the total area rises, then it falls, then it rises again as different parts of those rotors get exposed. Let's just, I'll have a look at the, the whole track for you. Um, you might want to play this slowly back so you can get some data out. I don't know. Uh, I'll maybe try and find a way to, I'm sure there's ways to step and record each one of these degree steps and uh, take that data out of there graph it all out but yeah as I said there's a whole load of other parameters to play with as well. So yeah lots to do.